It is Campfire Chat Day, and we got some great info on Diablo 4's upcoming Season 4. I'm going to break down all the important parts of the stream for you, so sit back, grab some snacks, and join me by the fire. Welcome to the Game Legion. I'm your host, Clipkus, for all things Diablo 4. By the end of this video, I hope you're going to be just as excited as I am. Let's dive into this juicy intro. Season 4 is going to be the biggest update we have ever made to Diablo 4 since it has launched. Yeah, I actually think the biggest update previous to this was Season 2 when they killed Critical Strike damage and the Vulnerable damage nerf. That was big, but this is way bigger. Our focus on Season 4 is to really make a lot of evergreen updates to the core systems of Diablo 4. We've never done anything like this. We are. Yeah, this is just like at its core. This is the game itself changing. This isn't just seasonal mechanics. Like, we are going to get to play this all the time. Are fundamentally changing how you engage with items, how you upgrade them, yes. and along the way, solving a lot of things that we've seen continually from our community. That we agree with our pain points of our existing item system right now. It seems like they've been listening quite a bit. This is a big change. Oh, man, the Codex of We're power. making a pretty radical change to the Codex of Power in this season based again on the feedback that has been coming from our player. So part of the final system that we have is going to be greater affixes. What's a greater affix? Well, we want to keep it compelling that there are some drops that are this, even better than the others. Awesome when, right when we played the PTR, there were Roman numerals next to it, and they were really, really hard to see. Those little stars there indicate how many affixes of greater are on each piece of item, and you can see it. That is a really, really big change, because at one point, you're going to stop looking at your legendary gear. You're only going to be looking for greater affixes. So to be able to see it, now you know that you're going to pick up something that's going to be really, really good. Trying to get the perfect build at endgame. Because of this, in World Tier 4, and only in World Tier 4, when an ancestral legendary item drops, there's a chance the are. affixes on it can roll as greater affixes. These will roll with bigger values that are normally available for that affix. Lastly, rounding out the new activities are just the inclusion of the Iron Wolves. They're finally joining the Iron fight. They could no Diablo longer stand too. in the sidelines, seeing the Hell Tides and Hell's forces intensify. I know that a lot of people are very disappointed that it seems like there won't be much of a seasonal thing, but the Iron Wolves are actually here to stay. They'll cover it, we covered a little bit later in one of the QAs there. But this is from Diablo 2. You used to be able to hire a mercenary in Act 3 of the Iron Wolves. So I'm hoping that this might be a precursor to eventually getting mercenaries. Somebody that we could hire, put some gear on and gear up. That would be awesome. Their assault on Sanctuary. As Season 4 players engage and progress through the Call of the Wolves seasonal activity, they'll earn honor with the Iron Wolves, unlocking access to a vast assortment of rewards to accompany and... Let's look at the rewards here. Because we got tempering material here, Forgotten Souls, another legendary tempering manual, some legendary gear, which I'm assuming is probably going to be 925. Okay, this is cool. And then back in season two, during the vampiric zone, we actually had a, like a, this exact setup right here. And the grind was actually really long. It wasn't, a lot of people have said that this might be like the lunar event where it's going to be really, really quick. But I'm hoping they did it like season two, where you actually had to go into the seasonal zone, which this will probably be, be Helltide, since they're all going to be fighting alongside you in Helltide. And you actually have to really, really grind this to get all of the rewards. And there's some stuff upcoming and later on in the stream about this and about the co cosmetic rewards. So it's, it's pretty cool. Power your season four journeys. One of my favorite themes for these ambushes is the Hellworm. It's literally a giant. This, oh man, the first time that this thing popped out of Helltide when I was in the PTR, I literally jumped in my seat. This thing is awesome. Hold on, wait, wait, we gotta, we gotta rewind that just a little bit. Let's look at this here. Look at this thing. It just like comes flying out. Literally a giant hell slug and spits beast out a bunch that of emerges from the ground and it spews out a whole bunch of mobs at you. I think that the best that. part of this update so is that you're gonna be really empowered to build the character that you want to play. You're gonna be able to pick custom affixes, 
and enhance your character in a lot of new and interesting ways. That was very true. And that you really, really felt it when you played the PTR. You felt like you were actually going to be able to create a character that you wanted. And it didn't have to be a meta build. You could play whatever you wanted to play. And it felt like you could make it work with the way that they adjusted everything, which is great, great change. May 14th. Make sure you're there. It was, again, super valuable. It's been really, really great for the team. You'll take a lot of these, uh, these this, this feedback, look, like the, look at the tuning variety of features, and, uh, and really make sure that we've got the best version of the, uh, the Season 4 experience ready. Uh, when we get into the launch today. I really think they're going to so, do a good uh, job with So, you know, this. in terms of, like, our big takeaways, first of all, really, really valuable across the board. Season yeah. 4, I Season Loot Reborn was, I as I mentioned was during the, really, uh, the PTR really stream thing. originally, was really our opportunity to go back and take a lot of the feedback in that we've been looking at since the launch of the game. So now that we're looking at, like, even when we're done that, 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 that one big release for Season of Blood, we knew that there was a lot more that we wanted to do, again, that we've been, we've been thinking about. But there's a lot of work we need to do, like make sure that all of these things really all fit together cohesively. Yeah, I mean, that's was the whole reason that they postponed the season. It was a long wait. It's still a long wait. But I really think that it feels like they took the use of the PTR and the extra time that they needed. And then they also set up a PTR. So that means that if there are any in the future, which I'm sure there will be, they already have a platform now. I don't think this is going to affect us like it did this season. Stuff Like you'll have like items that are like, you know, this is like a 904 eye power sword, and this is a 909 eye power sword. Now I've got so like six helmets at all, or like or, or have a, vari a wide variety of advocacies on them. We really I want to, again, just to, just to quickly hit this, we want to make sure that we had a lower number of advocacies overall that could roll on different item slots. Uh, but those, those advocacies were more like generically useful and stuff that you could really build around, as opposed to having lots of really conditional advocacies going back to like the you know, the damage on Tuesday's really joke, you know, too. like that's like... The shirt that... The shirt that we want, literally, literally, literally wearing, wearing it out. Uh, so, so huge, pro huge proponent, I, it's, it's, it's always funny. <laughs> that's, so that's nice. awesome. We also made all the items post level 100, 925. So you're no longer yeah. comparing like the designer number that's like 904 to that's 925. A, a You're just focusing on what's cool about the item, which is the affixes. Yeah, right? which is super important because there was a lot of situations of your items. So. Um, we actually have some video, I think, of, of what the tempering feature looks like, and I can talk through some of the updates this we've made from the PTR. Quite a bit. So here you have, you know, like. we're adding a, an offensive. See, I'm hoping that, and I wish that this would be a change. So there's four affixes there. That first one was three. If it was just three, you'd actually have a much lower chance of breaking an item, and that's a concern for a lot of people. So I don't know if they're going to adjust that later on, but a lot of people don't want their great item that they found to be bricked because they have a 25% chance to get the affix they want and only five chances to get it. Or on some of them, you have a 20% chance because there's only, there's all, it goes all the way up to five different affixes. Uh, affix to the item, it's gonna land on uh, increased corpse explosion damage. It's like, yeah, that's pretty cool, especially if you really like corpse explosion. Um, we've added a skip button so you can skip through the flow. This is actually a cool change right here it wouldn't tell you what changed and what you got your upgrades on. You would have to actually mouse over the piece of gear to see what it was. Now they're adding it right here so you can see it. That was a really, really great quality of life change because it was, it was really a pain to just upgrade, check, upgrade, check every four levels. I really want to blast through this. Um, we also have a, uh, a result screen now that shows you exactly what affix it landed yeah, right. on and just what the like roll that. range yeah. was. Um, and then we have some more Let's exciting affixes that those... you're going to see here. Lots For example, affixes. chance to uh, cast Bone Spear projectiles twice, which I know Adam is, is your favorite because oh, of yes. all the, I love more all the, projectiles. the balance bomb Don't dropped say in your like lap. That. Everyone it's loves so projectiles. great. <laughs> it is right. a lot of these, uh, again, these improvements in tempering from the, the skip animations mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the previews and stuff like that that players will see were, were based off of feedback that we actually got yep. from PTR. Yeah, um, they, they definitely and so, listen, again, a huge shout out to me and you for, for providing all that feedback for us so that we can actually get that in before the the yeah. launch of season it's four. So, uh, you know, overall, what we've really feedback. done is taking a look at the feedback. We got a bunch of feedback that this is right tedious here. to upgrade these over and over. Yeah, that's um, really you know, good. So we've removed the animation. Normally, there was an animation here, and you would just have to sit and wait. Even when you hit skip, it still took a long time. This is just you click the upgrade button, and it upgrades. From ranks one through three. Uh, we've kept the critical, uh, you know, upgrade. We have the animation still there, but you can skip it. 
Um, you know, again, sort of in the spirit of blasting <clears throat> across everything that we do. So you can do that very quickly. Um, and the uh, another that's, that's piece of new. feedback really that we nice. got um, was that, you know, part of the master working process allows you to reset this. And why do you want to reset this? It's because you want to hit that specific affix you're looking for. You want to juice a specific affix. And sometimes you might miss, right? Which means you want to reset that item. Yeah. Um, so part of the resetting uh, sort of requires you to get uh, lower tier materials. Um, you're going to get mm -hmm. these from the pit. Yeah, we'll this talk was about kind that of a, a pain, but later. I think that they're um, But overall, uh, we saw a bunch of feedback. Uh, one thing that um, they did mention is that master working won't fail. Um, so if we just go back a little bit oh, here, uh, right to to where they were doing their uh, their demo here, this doesn't fail anymore. You used to have a chance to fail, but they got rid of that because you're going to have to reset so many times. That constant failing and constant failing was just like a time suck, and it just it really sucked. So this is actually a really awesome change too. So now you can just worry about resetting your 25% increases at 4, 8, and 12. And if you guys want an in-depth look at what it looked like on the PTR, this is obviously has changed a little bit, but here's a video. Just check this out. This is break, breaks down all of my experiences with it. But great changes here. This is going to be a really, really big win. Let's get back over to this. Uh, it sort of requires you to get uh, lower tier materials. Um, you're going to get mm -hmm. these from the pit. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but overall, um, we saw a bunch of feedback that it was really tedious to create like a thousand caches and open up uh, them in town like yeah. a couple of times. Yeah, it was like doing like, the stones. The town is lava. Season. We want to address that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stay out so, of town. So, you know, we've, we've added multiple scales of material conversion to those caches. This is a short term solution. We have something in the future exactly, plan. It's just not ready. I think that it means that you can select how many of each you want and then you get like one or two chests from it. Um, we'll, we'll see when it launches, but. They're trying to make it so you don't have to buy 30 chests just to, in order to be able to get the amount of materials that you need for master working. Yeah. Um, so, you know, while it's not the perfect solution, it does get you there a little bit quicker. Um, there's multiple conversion of rates of materials so you can it. turn, um, you know, one uh, legendary material into a much higher count of materials based on okay. the tiers that we have in yeah, the crafting system. So again, not the perfect solution. We have something coming in the future up. It's like, God damn it, I have to pick a bunch of like yellow <laughs> items up to yep. do any of the cool crafting features. What the hell, Blizzard? That's um, an actual player quote. Yeah, 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 I can't yeah. 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 sure it was. Yeah, yeah so uh, what we've yellows. done is we've made it so that... I mean, that would be a great solution if they just completely got rid of yellow gear if you don't need it. But I think they actually start to address it later on in the stream, why they're not going to be getting rid of yellows. And instead of just like dropping veiled crystals on the ground every time a yellow would drop, uh, I think they're going to talk about that later on, though. Legendaries break down into equal amounts of veiled crystals, so mm -hmm. you can just not pick up yellow items. It's just a bonus now. We've also made uh, sacred and ancestral items break down into twi uh, two and three amounts of salvage. So sacred items will break down into double, Ancestral will break That's down cool triple. Change. So we're effectively like tripling the output yep. of a lot of the salvage here. Video here to show of, of what that actually looks like on the ground. Yeah, so this is what the um, So you can like see here's the weirdly long named item. <laughs> uh, with, with the the yeah. This right here, look at that. Actually, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, um, yielding commander <laughs> sacrificial sickle. Right. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we have a one greater affix star. It'll go up to three or four if it's a unique item, which always yes. feels incredible. Um, so it shows up on the ground when it lands, okay. and then if we can go to the next video, we actually have an indicator now um, when it... Okay, so look at that. So right... Let's just go back a second. When you open up your inventory, you can automatically see that you have which ones are greater affixes. So if you have great gear already and you've already figured out everything that you need, the only thing you need now is greater affixes, you can just mark all the rest of it as junk without even looking, salvage it all. So that's going to be a big win here, too. Um, when it is in the inventory, yeah. Yeah, so you can <laughs> see it. Zoom. Yeah. 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 Right. I asked this as a joke. And it was a so this is we reduce the imprinting cost of aspects quite a bit. Mm. Oh, so yes. that's really going to help the build crystals oh, as well. I think it yeah, went from like 75 build crystals to imprint on an ancestral armor to 16. So yeah, it's, it's a huge, pretty huge swing. Well, huge Just getting swing. way more of your aspects on here. It's a lot more flexible. Um, so yeah, we really want people to feel like, and you know, this is kind of the Codex of Power Base in general, which I'm really pumped about, is we want you to feel like you're able to re-imprint those aspects yeah. and that it's mm -hmm. something that you're not 
having a huge cost and huge barriers to doing yep. it, right? Because as you upgrade your gear, that should be part of your process is like putting Yeah. Since they're not going to be offering us um, any loadouts or anything like that, no saved Paragon boards, being able to just change gear without it being super, super, super expensive is going to be a really big win because all, there's so many builds that you can do. And like, I want to try all of them. So this is, uh, this is a really, really good, good change. All their favorite affixes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, again, thanks to everybody for playing on the PTR. We, we did get a ton of feedback. I'm not going to go over the specifics of everything that changed, um, but I'm going to go over kind of the categories of things just because there's a whole lot of changes. Um, one of the first big ones was end game survivability issues. So this is kind of talking about those people that went really far into the pit. And this is kind of something that's been happening on live as well that we wanted to address. And there's this phenomenon when you get really deep into the game and you're fighting high level monsters where, you know, you'll hit a point where the monsters are kind of easy and you're able to blow through with your really powerful builds. And then you kind of get to a point where they start one shotting you. And it can be, can be kind of mysterious it's and like hard crazy. to understand, like, what's going on? Why did this happen? We felt that a lot. Um, we've also had some issues balancing that kind of top-end survivability uh, when you get to those hard monsters in the game. One of the reasons for this Arbor is that is variability in player defensiveness has been really high traditionally. Um, this is why when you look at the new items in the game in Season 4... This is actually something that I've talked to a lot of people about, especially when you first start playing the game. You don't roll offense defensive gear like you don't roll defensive aspects you don't de roll defensive affixes because you don't think of that way you think okay i need to do a lot of damage so I'm, this is going to give me damage so i put this on so there is definitely a lot of variables uh variability between the players that know the game and the people that are just joining in or maybe have never done any research they just try and play because they enjoy the game and they're constantly dying. They barely can get into Nightmare Dungeons. This hopefully will make things a lot easier. Or uh, you don't see a damage reduction very much at all. It's a very premium stat now that's really hard to get. And it's to help solve this problem of when someone is stacking all damage reduction versus someone who has none of it, their difference in effective health and survivability is really, really high. And so it makes it hard to so balance trying the, to game. Even out the game. A lot um, more. Another part that we wanted to hit was really armor. That armor is kind of a really confusing stat. It's not really well understood how it works. I'm going to be going over in a little bit how it works and what we're changing to kind of address both of these issues a little bit. Uh, next uh, is that some stats can get really high. <laughs> you know, we added all these crazy awesome stats and we, you know, you can juice them with master working and crit them and all these things. Um, and it allowed for Dust some Devils. really crazy things on the PTR, which people love that, to post Devils, constantly yeah, at me. And we, to be clear, we like crazy things, you know, it's, it's awesome to get powerful and have that fantasy. Um, we do have to take into account things like combat clarity and computer performance to make sure that, you know, the game can combat still run uh, very well important. for everybody. Um, so we made some changes there to address that. You mean it's not fun to just not see the screen yeah, or the ground? I think <laughs> it God, can you imagine, like, if they brought back something like AOZ? And having to do an AOZ run with a world, uh, dust bar barbarian, like you couldn't see anything on the ground. You were, your runs would end every single time because you would die from standing in something. For a little while, like, it is hilarious. I think. Yeah, it's, it's funny for a bit, but when you can only see like patches of ground. <laughs> and when one spot, player can do that, let alone when you get four of them in a group, it's yeah, yeah. it it's great. <laughs> Um, and last but not least, you know, balance changes and bug fixes. I'll be going over some of them, but there's way more than what I'm covering right now today. But just know, like, we took a lot of feedback on balance, a lot of feedback on bugs. There were a lot of them that were reported, and we, we acted on a lot of them, and I'll give an example of some that we did. All right, so let's go into armor. Right, here's so, uh, brief history lesson or description of how armor works today. This is like when you log in, how, how armor is functioning. Um, it's your stat for physical damage mitigation. So you know how you have your elemental resistance that caps at 75 and then... Okay, so we're just going to jump past this, but this is what it looks like right now. And that is your actual armor cap that you need to run basically the highest dungeons in the game. They're going to be changing this quite a bit. Uh, this was really confusing because it, when you look at your tooltip, it always says 85% damage reduction based on the monsters that you're fighting. Uh, but if they scale up for some reason or something, then it, it then your number scales down, and so it was really hard to calculate. Stuff a little bit. So we'll um we'll jump forward ahead a little bit here and see what, we, today. what we get. Make them sound like chipmunks. 
Let's see, where was it? Okay, here's the new one, right here. Get to the beginning of this here, season three. The cap is still going to be 85%, and you're still going to need escalating amounts of armor as the monster level gets higher. But what we're changing here, uh, if we go forward a little bit, is that uh, armor is now going to cap at that level 100 monster number. So that 9,230, you can write down this number. Uh, we're also going to later get into the tooltip. We d couldn't get it in for the launch of Season 4, but we'll have it soon yeah. after. Um, but it's kind of going to be like Elemental Resistance, where you get to this number, and then you're kind of done with the system, right? So you, armor is just another thing on your checkbox of things you want to do as far as defensive survivability. And once you get it, you're done. You know, you That's basically one juggernaut. You may not even need juggernaut anymore. You may not even need to use a plus armor stat anymore. You probably will just hit that from maybe a point or two in your Paragon board, and that's about it. But with the armor that you have on. You can get it from here. Uh, legendary aspects and so on uh, particularly in season four i think this will be a little bit of an easy number to hit we're not trying to make this super difficult or I hard so to too. do yeah I think um, it'll be very achievable for you uh when you're a level 100 player so here we have a zoom in on the that's good though that's good we need that uh, a couple caps that they added in here so next uh stat caps so you know now that we've introduced a lot of ways to get really high amounts of stats in the game um we want to kind of control for visual clarity you know, how, what a player can put onto their screen. So kind of similar to some caps we have already in the game, like attack speed or elemental resistance, um, we're putting some caps on cooldown reduction and the increased area size. You know, like, it's really fun to get those giant frost novas that cover the screen, but when it goes, like, two or three screens away, it can get really noisy and messy. So we still want these stats to be really powerful and impactful, um, but just control a little bit the it's amount of insanity that exactly they can how bring. Much that is. I mean, this is a really high number, 75%. Uh, cooldown reduction that's going to be really hard to hit that so i think that that should be okay it's a high number this one that's kind of a bummer that they're capping it i kind of understand why they're doing it but that was so much fun i was was running a minion necromancer and i would place to crepify and it would take up the entire screen and then some so I obviously it's not going to be quite that big anymore, but that was part of the fun of this. So hopefully they don't nerf it too much. Hopefully that still takes up most of the screen. And one thing on this cooldown reduction cap, uh, to be clear, this is not just CDR across the entire game. This is just capping what you can get from gear. So, so this is like the base cooldown reduction you get when you get first cast the skill, what it's going to be. You can still get cooldown resets or uh, additional cooldown effects from things like the skill tree or legendary powers that just reduce the cooldown of your skills as you do certain mechanics. Um, this is just like the baseline cap that comes from your gear. I think when we looked at the cap for area effect too, we tested it on. Yeah, see, there's, there's your tool tips. They got 8%, you get 10% from your amulet. Actually, it goes a little higher now that they added in the greater affixes and stuff, and then you can increase your uh, master working to get your cooldown reduction to go up. So I can see why they're capping it out at 75% because it, with this new system, uh, you might even be able to get 100% cooldown reduction if you got everything perfect. And then you'd have nothing. Like, you could you imagine uh, Sork running Flame Shield and just spamming it as much as they wanted? That'd be pretty insane. And also you would clear everything. There'd be no point to playing. Frost Nova, and we're like pretty meticulous on what that cap should be, and it was still massive. No, like, it's huge, yeah. yeah. That, that, when I say like we're making a cap, you're still okay, going to well, get to insanity so when it comes still, to what's yeah. on your screen. It's still going to be <laughs> awesome. Um, so you can see here, this is just uh, showing you what the tooltip looks like now. So we're going to be showing you, you know, as a player, what those going on. The back, like, feedback, I'm going to go over some of the things. Um, one of the bigger categories of things was, again, like I mentioned, those here changes due to combat readability and balancing player power. Um, a few examples here of things that we're dust reducing levels. are like the amount of dust levels that can be on your screen dust and um, Fractured Winter Glass, one of my new favorite uniques we're bringing in, the amount of frozen orbs that could span the screen. Oh, this is this is big, though. Fortify damage reduction is increased from 10 to 15%. That's really good. Um, they uh, did some tempering updates. Those will be fun to see. Some of the F, some of the manuals really weren't all too great, so hopefully they they changed that a little bit. And then druid wolves, they were always dying. I was running a shred druid this season, and they just always died. So that's going to be a, a pretty big buff there. And two hundred percent health, that's that's big. Uh, let's take a look at the dust devils and see what it looks like now. This is going to be like this is it right here. 
So we're also going to look at the damage because the, supposedly the damage is increased even though the amount of dust devils went down. All right, so here's dust devils as an example. So you can see on the left. This is... Let's see if we can see. It's just so there's a million. One. Eighty-one. Well, uh, one point six million right there. One point four million right there. No millions here. More. 500,000, 1 million. So it looks like they doubled the damage. Barbary. That might be a 1.8. Yeah, it looks like that might be 1.8 million there. So like so we're 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 looking at um at double the damage here, but a lot less. And by themselves, yeah. the amount of dust levels that they could produce, right? And then on the right, you can see kind of the same barbarian. You can see like the dust doubles around. I do wish that they went behind you though. Because a lot of times you run past, you evade monsters, and you're attacking things in front of you. And then this side oh, here. There is... Oh, wait. The enemies are. They're still getting hit by they're a ton of them. But it's not covering the entire screen, right? And especially when you get like three, yeah, four, many players higher. together. It, it really becomes insanity. Yeah, it's when you're in a, a party of four barbs or, uh, yeah. you know, it's just like, everyone's a barb and okay. I don't know where I'm walking. Yeah, <laughs> and other classes can do that kind of thing too, not just barbs. I mean, it is pretty kind of thick about that. So, you know, this is kind of seeing the difference there. between PTR and live. Okay. And next we have another class change, so Scoundrel's Kiss. Uh, this is another one of our all new rogues out there. that uh, rogue oh. players... I really hope that they give rogues a little bit of, of love, like they really need it. Give us a lot of feedback on. So uh, a quick summary of how this new unique works is it kind of changes your rapid fire skill from shooting straight and, and hitting a single enemy into kind of a mortar skill where you shoot up into the air and then your arrows fall on the ground and explode. Um, it's really, really this cool, but cool one of the pieces it. of feedback we got was that when you launched the arrows, they would kind of go in a line and they wouldn't all hit the same enemy anymore. So if you were trying to do single target damage, it could actually be a nerf unless you like walked right up to the enemies and shot them then. And while there was a way to play around it, you know, players weren't really happy that, like, we transformed the skill so much that I went from a ranged still skill to kind of a melee skill. So we made an update here, and we have a video of a before and after. But basically, you see on the PTR on the left here how, you know, it goes in a big line, and then the player has to run yes. right next to the target dummy to That's do the really full damage much. to it. And on the right now, you'll see, That's basically, cool you though. target where those arrows are going to drop, and they just all... Okay, look at the damage here. 61,000. 53,000. So you can hit a single one. This one, look at that. That's like three, five enemy, times. And you also hit all the enemies around. Look at that, 1.2 million. The arrows damage explode. is way so higher. It should be a lot more usable compared to the Okay, so that's, that's a pretty big buff. Ricochet with my rapid fire? I'm pretty ricochet. sure, yes, it can. So oh, it, it does all the things and inherits all the things that your rapid fire does. That's very cool. But can cool. a double projectile? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it can, just like <laughs> everything else. Yes, okay. yes. Double spam everything. Everything. Yes. That would be Love fun. spam. And last but not least, uh, bug fixes. Like I mentioned before, there uh, were a the whole lot of bug fixes reported to coming. us. Thank you all for getting them. Uh, we addressed pretty much every single one that was reported. Um, I'm giving some examples here, but again, we got a lot more than what I'm showing on the screen. Uh, one was Druid's Hurricane was incorrectly scaling damage basically infinitely, uh, so we fixed that. Uh, Evan Piercer, the extra missiles from our new uh, Unique, they incorrectly had a 100% lucky hit chance, which is proccing uh, a lot of crazy stuff. That would have been fun. Um, and then Flame Weaver, another one of the new things we introduced to the game, um, it's basically an effect where you can put a firewall on the ground and then you shoot firebolts through it and it'll split the firebolts. Really cool fantasy, yeah. um, but what happened when, in the PTR was you could stack a bunch of firewalls right on top of each other, and they would split the firebolts multiplicatively and add more and more, way more than intended. That so you could fire crazy. a ridiculous I number of firebolts, that. which That's were awesome. crashing servers and things. So it wasn't great. Um, but now we fixed that, so it'll work properly. God, you remember when... Why is it always Sorks? You remember AOZ when Sorks first started running Wild Lightning or uh, all of, any Lightning build? Everything would lag. All of it. The whole thing. Coming in with hell time for all the, uh, the the PTR feedback that we had. Yeah, I think I have a PowerPoint of my own. Ooh, Let's see. There you go. Look at that. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, as mentioned, tons of sweeping changes going into the hell tides and just hell overall balance of the game in general, season four. Busted. And kind of with that, sometimes you know we push a little bit too far in some regards. So we did get feedback and also just own internal kind of fill checks on the cinder drop rates were feeling a bit slow in the PTR. So we just went back, reviewed it, and 
um, gathered our feedback and just iterated on the drop percentage to hit closer to the expectations of how much we want to be collecting the help, or that, the cinders, and interacting with the tortured gifts. So I think we're in a much better spot. I, I know we're in a much better spot right now, actually. Right the, um, so that was one of the first um, uh, major them. pieces coming out from the PTR. A lot more chess from this, yeah? Yeah, chess, more yeah. loot, more fun. Awesome. Uh, let's see the next one. Yeah, so on the topic of more is more fun, uh, the Baneful Hearts, we were noticing that they were dropping a bit inconsistently. Yeah, so you can get, get the Baneful the Hearts from opening tortured gifts, uh, killing the Hellborn, and one of the Doomsayer uh, variants, one of our new activity types. Um, <clears throat> but again, we want to get the Baneful Hearts in the hands of the I like this part here, don't hoard. I, I think this is going to be kind of the theme for the season, is don't hoard your stuff, just use it, because I think they're going to try and just give you everything that you need to just kind of try and have fun this season. Players with a pretty you know, steady cadence. Um, so we noticed with the PTR that we're just not gaining them as frequently as we wanted to. Um, so we just uh, went back, iterated, and kind of reviewed our bad luck protection to just ensure that we improve the consistency that Baneful Hearts are dropping. And this is all kind of like, the Blood Maiden is not meant to be seen as like this you know, highly ambitious piece of content that you only engage with like once every 50 levels. We want you getting the hearts. We want you engaging That's with good. the social boss summoning uh, mechanic. And, you know, I think it just two. adds that extra layer to the health as we want you to engage with. Zone. So this will be similar. And on the topic of the Blood Maiden, overall, like we touched on earlier, uh, the Blood Maiden is just saving some overall uh, rewards improvements. So as noticed, or as mentioned before, if you contribute to the summon of the Blood Maiden, you receive mm -hmm. a bonus reward. But one oh, of the things was that that's good. you couldn't really tell. There is a little icon that appears like when your buff bar, but the effects of that was largely unnoticed mm -hmm. um, for both the team and actually, you know, just the PTR players themselves. Um, so again, taking this opportunity to just review the overall value of the Blood Maiden for contributors and non-contributors alike. Because again, we wanted to make sure that she is that a lot. has a clear role you, in the Hellhead mm -hmm. experience. Anything so, at all? Again, overall, you Blood Maiden is just overall more points. valuable. Um, you know, with this, we're dropping things like legendaries, forgotten sold, lore zero mats, and a percent chance for contributors at world tier at the end world tiers to uh, you know get some end game boss materials as well. Mm. Yeah. Oh, boss materials, that's good. They forgotten souls dropped everywhere. They also added a legendary shine to it, so it it's really really noticeable in the map. It was it was awesome. Tuesday, um, but uh, we right, did want to talk a little wolves. bit about uh, Season 4 and the Iron Wolves' participation in that, along with um, some cool things that are specific to uh, seasonal characters for uh, Season 4 as well. Yeah, yeah, so <clears throat> again, as mentioned, the players who joined us in the PTR, or again, caught all the various blog posts, uh, will notice that the Iron Wolves are now a permanent part of the Helltides. You know, they're okay. fighting and dying alongside yeah, the players now, and they're here to stay. However, for our seasonal players, uh, we have the Call of the Wolves seasonal activity, mm -hmm. um, where players will get to spend a bit more time with the Iron Wolves and go on a bit of a journey a with them time. to try and uncover the potential root cause behind these rising tides and super quick. uncover this mysterious phenomenon that's threatening to corrupt and consume the Iron Wolves from within. Uh, in addition to that, you know, again, the Iron Wolves are in the hell tides with you, Oh, As players are fighting and dying alongside the Iron Wolves and the Helltides, you're also going to be earning your way through the Wolves' Honor reputation system. And this is saying you progress your way through a collection of just soup. Oh, here. I wonder what that is. Are these cosmetics? Oh, the cosmetics, yep. Okay. Cosmetics, some tempering material. Oh, people were concerned about this on the PTR also. Okay. Not a not a terrible. We're juiced bit of rewards. rewards that are specifically tuned to overpower your leveling journey from level one to one hundred okay. and beyond. The main pillar for this reputation track was really pushing the player's powers forward. The player power forward. There you go. The player's power forward. And giving them early access to, you know, gear with the uh, juice stats, uh, legendaries, materials, boss like materials, and even a resplendent spark to you as like a cherry on top at the end. Um, we love the juice. We oh, there's a resplendent spark at the end too. So once you complete it, you get a resplendent spark. You need four of them to summon 
uh, to craft one Uber. You do, yeah. you do <laughs> love that. Choice too. Um, but, you know, in the spirit of wait, there's more. You know, those are all like the gameplay related things, but we also have a couple of really cool cosmetics um, that you earn through the collective called the Wolf Seed. Oh, here. I think this was one of the last rewards here. That's pretty cool looking. That would actually go really cool with my Barbarian's Hell armor. That's awesome. Seasonal activity. <laughs> oh, wait, here. There was a head here, too. And, oh, a little bit fast. But, um, yeah, the so the Iron Wolf Mount Trophy. We're doing it live. Um, that's Tides. earned from completing the... Re there it is. Um, <clears throat> you got both of them. Um, that's earned through completing the Reputation Track, and the uh, Blood Maiden Head is earned by completing the associated Iron the Call of the Wolf quest line. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, those look really great. And so of course, the reputation as you mentioned, looks that's like the profane mind cage. Um, yeah, so there it is. Oh, so is the profane mind cage here. is pretty cool in the sense that it's a guaranteed drop from the Hellborn, and when you consume it, I kind of like to imagine you just like eating this demon so brain. Drop. Um, yeah. When yeah, when you consume it uh, for the next sixty uh, minutes, the Hell type monsters are going to be boosted up to ten levels depending on the world tree that you consumed it in. And you're also going to be lot. increasing their aberrant cinder drop rates. So, you know, again, all tying this back to that leveling journey and like tempering and stuff, like. End up like obtaining additional ones of those or can get more of those throughout the season and everything. Yeah, we want to be Still very uh, the... generous with those. Um, mm -hmm. So, one, they're guaranteed. end up like obtaining additional ones of those or can get more of those throughout the season and everything yeah we want to be very uh generous with those um mm -hmm. so one they're a guaranteed drop from the hellborn in world tiers three and four uh but you can also use four. them in world tiers one and two so oh, if you, you want to like boost some back. level you know alts and whatnot That's um nice. you also get a, a i think like a bucket of them through the wolves honor bucket reputation like we crammed as many rewards as we could in there so they will be in steady stream so don't again in the spirit of like use it don't hoard it definitely experiment and have fun there with this thing again. because you know aspects online um so we've taken a look and we've moved some of the master working material tiers around previously uh you know the tier one master working materials only came from one to twenty we've moved that up uh ten tiers so tier one will come from one to twenty nine tier two so we're talking about the materials that you need for master working they made some changes here to this um so this will actually help when you're going to have to reset your gear because you're going to have more of the regular ones two will come from 30 to 59 and tier three will be 60 plus and what that does is it just makes the journey feel a little bit more rewarding right like we saw in the ptr i see that right there they got it, it's really visible you can you know exactly when a, a, you get a greater avix that's that's pretty cool journey feel a little bit more rewarding right like we saw in the ptr that people just like within the first two hours just blasted through all of yep. it because they're so powerful um so we've just adjusted some of the the rates there so you have to push a little bit deeper you have to optimize your build a little That's bit good. more it's, so those armor hard. caps are things to watch out for right where yeah. if you're over the armor cap it's just a straight optimization to start thinking about how you want to replace some of that armor we think that feels pretty good and overall, we've increased the health and damage, or, or sorry, I should say, increased the health on all monsters post level 100, both in the pit and nightmare dungeons. So that's a big win, though. Nightmare dungeons too, because right now nightmare dungeons they just you kind of breeze right through them. So that'll be that'll be nice to actually have to to do some damage to the monsters in there. The enemies should be pushing back on you a little, but obols are terrible. Uh, but you know, again, <laughs> Why um, do I want obols are terrible. I know, right? A big part of season four was that this you know we made the gambler uh, guarantee 925 legendaries at level 100, mm -hmm. and those legendaries can roll greater affixes. So you oh, know, nice. if you blow uh, you know a ton of obols uh, on two-handers, for example, those two-handed legendaries you're getting are the same as anywhere else in the game. So it, it's actually a huge efficiency boost to getting. The items you're looking so for. So to be clear, you can get like some of the best items oh, in the yeah. game you from the Obol vendor now. Absolutely. So, yeah. Like what a change! Like that is a complete 180. I'm pretty sure that I was Obol capped for the entire season three, and I didn't spend a single thing. So this is going to be awesome. But now you actually you're going to have a reason to go and spend your Obols. And I don't think they mentioned it in the stream. I think it's in the patch notes, which I'll keep the patch notes in the description. Uh, so you can go read them if you want to read through it. 2,500 cap instead of 1,000 for obols. That's a, a really big jump, and that's going to make it much easier because then you don't have to constantly run to the obol vendor and spend all your obols. When, when you use the enchanting feature in Diablo 4, you can't actually enchant off of...
an affix into a greater affix. That's right. Yes. So when a good item drops for you in the uh, in the base game, you can't you can't try to like roll for greater affixes off mm -hmm. the enchanting system. Yeah. It's good for getting you to a stat you really need in a situation where an item didn't get you what you wanted. Yeah. Uh, but okay, so no re-rolling for greater affixes. You just have to find all the greater affixes you need, which really makes it so that you have to get really lucky if you want to find all three greater affixes that you want. Now with the Opal's vendor, like those items, not only are they I power 925 and they have the chance to be legendary, of course, like, they, uh, like the Opal's vendor always has, uh, but you also have a chance to get uh, greater affixes right. off those gambled yeah. items. Yeah, that's cool. So there, there are sure some... We sure yeah. did. We, we actioned on it for yeah. sure. So, uh, and then there's funny enough, uh, there's also even in the um, uh, the season journey, I believe there's also like a changes to the, uh, the the ashes themselves where you can actually use that to boost even like yeah. the glyph XP yeah. is also. Yeah. So, talk about so glyph XP. In this upcoming season, they changed the amount that you're going to get by about 25%, I think it is, from Nightmare Dungeons. And then in the seasonal blessings, so all your cinders that you get, you can put those into getting, I think, another additional 25%. So you're actually going to have to spend way less time doing Nightmare Dungeons, which means more time in the pit. That's awesome. So part of yeah. that um, with the, the season journey. So more. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, wait, more. I have this more. list, but then I don't actually read it. <laughs> but then it's just like a prop. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, the, one other thing that we did was we heard a bunch of feedback that uh, players were dying. At the end of the pit, because we have this like shadow boss that, that sometimes comes in and, and throws a wrench in what you're doing. Uh, um, and you know, as much as I push there. for learn to play, you know, our encounter designers. <laughs> I like that good philosophy yeah. person. Yeah. Ruthless. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Take that, players. Players. <laughs> yeah. 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 Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, yeah. Isn't it fun to die after you killed the boss? Uh, yeah. So uh, our encounter designer uh, did an amazing job mm -hmm. cleaning up a lot of those affixes after you killed that boss, and the arena should be clear now after yeah. you killed that boss. Updates to the boss ladder because the boss ladder itself is changing Ooh, pretty is pretty significantly. We talked a little bit about like how you can get exactly additional great. materials cool. in other places um, that Derek had mentioned, uh, but uh, Colin has additional t um, like points that he wants to bring up about uh, the boss ladder because we got a lot of feedback on that and uh, it, there's some new changes to it That's with right. season four. Yeah, so we added Endario, the best lesser evil. Yes. Yeah. 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 Who has my damn Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's dunking me. Um, yeah, he just dunks me with orbs all day. Who likes that guy? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Endario obviously has come back. She's incredibly fun. How much was that? They're changing this right here. Tormented. 2-2. Two, two. So it used to be five times. So that used to be 10. I think they covered that, but they're, they're dropping it significantly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Andariel obviously has come back. She's incredibly fun to fight. The encounter design team killed it. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, on top of Andariel, we've added a new tier to the boss ladder uh, called Tormented Bosses. So these are much higher level than level 200 bosses, um, sort of pinnacle aspirational bosses to take down. And um, what we've done here is we heard a bunch of feedback that um, it required five times the amount of it boss materials, including like some rare pit too. material, to summon these, and five times the reward. Um, that didn't really feel like the right amount of reward efficiency for taking on something that was challenging, so we've nerfed the cost. Uh, it's now 3x the amount of oh, boss material and 5x the reward, so you, mm. you get some pretty big efficiency wins. That's Varshan. It looks like it's just three, right? Because you need so many, they didn't, and it was just single. So it's just three, which actually really isn't too bad. That's that's not bad at all. It's now three x the amount of boss material and five x the reward. So you, you get some pretty big efficiency wins there, especially if you're crushing them in the end game. Um, so that that's feeling pretty good. Uh, we think uh, we also heard a lot of feedback that it's uh, tedious to do the same activity over and over and over to summon some of these things, right? So there's an activities and, and, and things like that. So, you know, elites, whisper caches, treasure goblins, world bosses, you know, Hellborn to name a few, are all going to start randomly dropping um, these boss materials. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're not necessarily forced into doing one exact activity. It's still going to be the absolute best way to get some of this boss. So now everywhere is going to drop boss materials to summon the uber bosses. But if you still want to speed it up, doing things like Barshan and Beast and Ice and all of those, that, that is still going to be the fastest way 
to get there, but you can now get it from ever. So if you're just uh, if you're just a grinder and you want to get out into the dungeons or get out uh, get out into Helltide, you're gonna have a chance to get all these bats <laughs> without having to go through things. Material, but as long as you're blasting, you're just gonna be getting a lot of these materials ambiently, which which is pretty awesome. And then something else, you know, speaking of resplendent sparks, we're adding one to Uber Lilith. So the first time you kill Uber Lilith, you're also Uber going Lilith to get any other resplendent favorite spark. Fight. So now that that brings us to look at this. Look at that. Can you imagine having a dev button? Just one click. Click that dev button and you now have 203 resplendent spark. <laughs> Give yourself 40 uber uniques. One for every single character you could possibly want. Three opportunities of being able to earn yourself a resplendent spark. We, That's we right. heard one from from Derek at the end of the, the season, uh, the Iron Wolves, you know, uh, Three of them. Uh, board, yep. and, and oh doing that within the season. We now have one with uh, the Echo of Lilith, and of course one with your first Tormented boss as yep. well. So, yep. I'll, uh, so it's a total of three. First Tormented boss, whichever one it is, it can be Varshan, it can be Uduriel, it can be Andariel, it could be uh, Grigoire. So there's one there. When you complete the seasonal quest line that's another one and then when you defeat uber lilith so if you let's say that you're running um a, a barbarian and you get one the one uber unique that you don't want you can now trade that in and get yourself a grandpapa and you can just go out there and start smashing already so you'll be able to salvage your first one if it's not the legendary or the uber unique that you want to get the exact one that you want, so you can start off the game with the one that you want. Additional opportunities to earn on, on the Uber Uniques. Um, you know, we oh, heard a bunch of feedback cool. that it feels like a chore to have to do. You know, the Penance at Night into Varshan cool. into Doom yeah. Durial just for a chance at an Uber Unique, right? Um, and you know, we've experienced that ourselves, mm -hmm. right? It's like God, I got to do all this stuff to to fight the boss that's going to actually drop something that I care about. Um, you know. Greater Affixes has helped that because, you know, the, there's some variation to the uniques you're going to get. But for Uber uniques, we've, ac we've actually added a small chance, um, a little bit lower than Duriel, mm -hmm. to all of the ladder bosses. All and they're going to have a chance to drop an Uber unique as yep. well. Mm -hmm. So, you all know, bosses. while you're grinding through this ladder, every single boss you kill is going to have a chance to drop an Uber unique. That is it's not cool. exactly the same as uh, Duriel, Duriel and, and Duriel. <laughs> we should do like a combo, like a dagger yeah. in your life. A lot of yeah. Yeah. Um, And uh, we think that's going to make it feel a lot that better. That's a big awesome. change. So, yeah, really us big. over on Class Designer, we're really passionate about this and we're excited for it. So, the season journey. Uh, so, we really want to kind of juice the rewards and make the season journey more exciting. And so, what we went and did was when you're going through the season journey for every class, you're actually going to be getting a, a preset curated uh, amount of legendaries as you're going through that are targeted toward a specific build. So we chose a build for every class. And so they're just going to give us a bunch of legendaries <laughs> that, uh, as you go through the season journey. So you don't get them all at once, but you um, you have the chests that you get or the rewards that you give you. They give you, and as you level up through this progression here, you can build an entire build based around what they give you. And I think they're going to make it so that by the time you're not even super high level, you can actually have a solid build put together. And if you find different gear, you can salvage all of this and you keep the aspects, which means you have an entire build already built into your Codex of Power, which is pretty cool. Maybe there. So Barbarian here, you can see, no surprise, uh, we're going to be giving you a bunch of legendaries related to Dust Doubles. Uh, the Druid, we're going to be giving one. you basically a Pulverized build, which is pulverized pretty cool. Is cool. But it's not compared to what everybody normally runs. Nah, I don't know. Next is the Necromancer. Uh, of I course, mean, everybody's going to be playing minions, so we gave you a bunch scary. of minion-focused legendaries. This should be pretty awesome. Yep. And then next is the Sorceress. Uh, we actually have a cool new legendary coming into the game for Incinerate, which you'll see oh, here. Yeah, it splits exactly. up. This. So we are giving you an Incinerate build on the Sorceress. It, I don't really think that's going to be And then the Rogue, uh, we're giving you one targeted toward Barrage. So again, kind of the point of this is that, you know, if you don't really know what you want to play Brad or you really want to just go so. through a season journey and try out something before you go to a build that you really want to do, you have a foundation of something more complete to start with. So, uh, uh, what does this mean for season powers in the right. future? So these oh, just Q &As. what season four. So the question was, what does this mean for the future of season, uh, seasonal powers? Because we didn't really get 
any this season at all. We just got upgraded to our items and then changed to the core game. So the question from the community was, are we going to get seasonal powers back? Because like they were they were great. You had the season of the Barber Heart. You had vampiric powers. I personally really loved the Seneschal, and I loved the unique aspects that it could bring to a build so that it let me drop things out of my gear or out of my paragon board so i liked that so anything like that i i love so hopefully and we'll find out what they're going to say soon but or is like yeah. the nature of season four yeah. yeah okay sure so yeah season four is a uh season four as i mentioned before is like an opportunity for us to kind of like lift up a lot of <coughs> aspects of the game that we think are really important diablo is a game about killing monsters and getting loot and as i said before getting loot uh, we need to make sure it feels at least as good as killing monsters, right? Like yeah. it's extremely important that this park uh, feels good. Yeah, and uh, we took a lot of our development effort and put it against that that goal as part of this release. And there were other parts of the game that we lifted up at the same time, like the various ch uh, changes that we talked about I mean, for, I, for Helltide, I for example. Pass on it. You know, the myriad new tempering recipes and things like that. There's lots of things we did, uh, I think, as part of the release, just make the base experience of Diablo 4 more fun, right? So I'm really. I mean, not only did they do that. But they had to set up a PTR. They had to create a whole new server for it. They had to upload everything. I for this one, and this one alone, I think everybody should just give them a break. Enjoy the new changes. We'll play through the Iron Wolf stuff. But I think they're gonna bring it back. And I really hope they bring it back because it was a big part of the game. But this is a really, really good and big change that is a ton of fun. So I think that it's okay. I'm excited we're able to do that in season four. Thinking about what the future holds, we always want to make sure that with every season, you know, we are adapting to what we think the game needs at that time. We think it's, it's going to make for a better experience overall. We we love the idea of seasonal powers. I we 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 we've learned a lot of really really great That's stuff good. Good from the days of the barber uh, all the way to the vampire powers we got in season two and all the seneschal and construct stuff we uh, we had in season three. Uh, we have lots of big ideas for the future, so but, you know you will you will see seasonal powers again in the future and, and different themes and mechanics as we go. That's you know that's kind of our promise to you. Let's let's uh, let's listen to that one more time. Mechanics as we go. That's you know that's kind of our promise to you. Promise. And with the things that we have in terms it's of like the Iron Wolf quest line and the we various rewards right you get, changes we made to the season journey for like yep. the, uh, getting like all of those themed items, uh, those like uh, those uh, those various like kind of aspect builds together as you kind of progress through. We want to keep building upon these mechanical elements as well at the same time to kind of continue to help lift up the experience. So yeah, we'll, we will we will be returning to seasonal powers okay. in the future. We're getting you know, some but back. every season, we want to make sure that we're doing what we think is be up, like lifting the game up uh, the most, the things that we think are Tell most important at that time. Awesome. Based on the um, answer, if it's next season. But question hopefully. from our, I'll, I'll, I'll bounce between some questions from chat and from our forums, because we did have a thread up in our forums about uh, okay. specific questions. Sure. But this one's from the forums. This is from Avalon. Um, they're asking if, uh, because, you know, season three actually ran longer and season four itself had a PTR, will season four actually be a shortened season or will mm. it still be an, a, a, a standard size season? They, they weren't sure how PTR is actually affecting the time on it. Uh, so PTR is is not as uh, is not as impactful for the timing here. We we, we it's, I think it's a, a slightly shorter season. I think it's like like one week shorter or something. I need yeah. to look at the date. Yeah, okay. and and I, I will note like not PTR. Bad. The one the week. reason why season three ran longer was because we wanted to make sure that we could get that PTR. This was that means that we can hop into hopefully seasonal powers one week earlier. Hopefully. Is our first PTR, um, so it, you know there's there's a little bit more effort into and needed to get that out for players. Yeah, I guess you, I, I guess I, you, you're absolutely right. So like I think about like when I'm thinking about the future and like what PTRs Correct. look like, what we want things to be like. We're it's not that like having a PTR automatically means that everything is, is going to take longer to deliver. It's, but like, but we, there's a lot of things we had to set up for the first time for the PTR for season four, and I'm really glad that we did because as I think you've seen, there's a lot of things we learned in going through the process. It gave us the time to iterate and use the feedback too, yeah. which we did a lot of things. Yeah, they did. Yeah, uh, question from Blake Darkos. Yes, uh, will you guys think about maybe a potential different bean color for items with greater affixes? Uh, so I know we talked about this for a while. Yeah, I yeah. I think um, that's something we're definitely going to keep an eye on. Like right now, we think that the the little dots or the I, would, I should say huge dots, the huge stars <laughs> on them, um, are, are doing a pretty good job. But you know, that's something that we we also need to feel out and play, and, and we're super open to feedback and yeah. seeing how these new big stars are going to help. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, the the change, especially the changes in the inventory, because like yeah. now you can actually yeah. identify yeah. them in your yeah. inventory and yeah, everything nice. is really big. And these also roll on unique, so there's a little bit of like work that we'll need to figure out. Um, but okay. again, yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah, yeah, you can get great graphics on unique yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's like what? Yeah, the beam color gets a little confusing there. If we yeah. so something to, to that we'll idea. monitor for sure, and uh, of course something that we've seen from players and a lot of people bringing that, that specifically up. Um, Fire Dragon Dad says that the season four update is going to retro into existing uh, Eternal. So season, everything we talked about today, with the exception of the Iron Wolves quest line stuff, yeah. is actually present in the Eternal realm. So um, players like the Codex power changes, everything like that will be there. I know there are a lot of questions related to like the Codex changes, especially for Eternal players. And just to clarify, if you have aspects in your inventory and your stash, they'll take whatever your highest roll of that specific aspect, and, and that will become your your new best uh, 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 codex entry mm -hmm. uh, when season four does start. You may need to log on to specific characters on Eternal uh, to, to oh, at least like for us Eternal. to be able to check okay. your inventory, but mm -hmm. the yep. stash I know will automatically oh, cool. move over there. Um, cool. And same thing for, for uh, I know we get a lot of questions about like items on Eternal. Those will be marked as like legacy items yep. specifically mm -hmm. okay. uh, because so obviously we like legacy. changed a lot of aspects yeah. and everything. And those items you can't you can't craft on those items either at that no. point. Like you can't you can't temper those items and yeah. you can't masterwork those items. But yeah. they'll still retain like the item upgrade state that they had from the blacksmith before. Exactly. So yeah. if you yeah. if, if, if it doesn't mean like when you log on all your gear is suddenly you unusable. Imagine? It's yeah. just yeah. it's just marked as there legacy surprising and you won't you won't be able to use actually uh, temper. It's a great stepping off point to getting some new items that could have greater affixes and other things that could be make it even more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a question that we have uh, actually from uh, the forums, this is from Iggy, uh, with the itemization reworks, is there, uh, what is like the next like big thing you guys are actually looking Ooh. at uh, potentially wanting to uh, really thing. work on uh, within the team? Uh, I don't know if we want to play our cards too uh, early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think it's, working on all this stuff. <laughs> we're working on all, all kinds of stuff, all everybody. But no, I, I think one thing we want to continue to work on, I, I think it. you see like, as we're thinking more about the the end game experience, a lot like when we when we launched Diablo Four, we thought of end game really as a journey from like really from fifty to hundred, like the things you're doing along the way and getting all of your prepared on glyphs and leveling those glyphs up and go diving deeper in nightmare dungeons and you know going and eventually confronting Lilith. That was what we kind of imagined or we thought that uh, the end game would feel like, and that was a good thing for us to build on. That was not end game. Lilith is end game. That fight is fun. I'm bummed they've nerfed her constantly, but that fight is fun. But the rest of it's not end game. So um, AOZ nailed it. It was tough. It was challenging. There was a lot of people that just like had struggled with it. But like that's what end game should feel like. If you have these crazy builds that you come up with, something really challenging like that. I think we saw that a lot more players were looking for end game like explicitly at level one hundred. Yeah. That was when they wanted a lot more things to open up. And we've made a lot of a changes lot of recently. Think Try to like create more gameplay around that part of the experience between like the itemization changes and the crafting changes, and also in the introduction of like tormented bosses, and of course uh, the uh, the pay the artificer. Yeah. So I think that like we know that there's more opportunities for us to build on these things, right? Like I think you've heard me say this before, but you know a lot of the things we're doing in season four specifically really are done to like build a new framework, you know, for how end game sort of functions, the the, yeah. the things that drive a player forward, the things that get them excited, that they, and and the content that they engage with along the way. And we know that we have the ability now to increase monster level. So if this feels too easy going into the season, then hopefully the season after, or even that midway patch where they add, add everything and they readjust things, they bring in new um, end game stuff. Hopefully they can adjust it to based on how the builds are feeling then. Well, right. We want to make sure that they're having uh, that players are having a, a really fun time or rewarding time while they're playing Diablo 4, and they can find opportunities to be appropriately challenged as they go through the experience as well. We think there's more opportunities for us to kind of like grow and expand uh, the offerings of things that players would have uh, have access to, the things they can go experience, you know, at that stage of the game. Awesome. Uh, question from Old Dudes New Games. Uh, in, old uh, Dudes <laughs> New Games. I love these names. They're so good. Uh -huh. um, what about That's codex me. resetting when swapping characters? That was actually just an issue on PTR. Um, like when you when you swap characters and stuff like that. Sorry. Yeah, when you swap, then you use the uh, yeah. when you use the boost NPC. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that that was, that was not a a yeah. uh, thing that you will experience in yeah. season four. Uh, and so you, you that's not a common thing or a normal thing that's supposed to happen. Yeah, could you imagine? Uh, it just was a bug that we had in Everybody PTR. Everybody would quit. Um, there's Everybody. a lot of questions here about. Um, uh, the mine cage, and I just want to um, mm -hmm. maybe clarify with the, the, the players. 
Um, Opus Crocus says, if you consume more than one, does the mind cage stack or does the timer reset? Timer reset, I think. Timer, yeah, reset. timer, timer resets. resets. Timer yeah. resets, okay. And then uh, in regards to, again, uh, this is from optics. Uh, do, cage, or do mind cages trigger for a single player or your whole group if you're grouped up? Single player. Just a single it's player. Yeah, yeah, it's a personal It makes thing. sense. It's okay. like, a, like an elixir. All right, so yeah. clarity around the mind cages because yeah. I know we've had a lot of people fair. ask specifically And we want feedback that. on this, by the way, too. So when you get a chance to play with the mind cage during the season, like, you know, yeah. tell us what you think. I don't really think it needs to be a group buff. And I think that if everybody's using it, then everybody... Actually, I guess, I mean, I guess it would be the same thing if, if everybody uses it or if only one person uses it. Uh, but it would be a really good way to stagger your threat because it increases the amount of threat generated. So if one person uses it and their threat starts building, then the next person uses it a minute later or 30 seconds later. So this way your threat is staggered. So the bosses are all spawning at different times and the elites are spawning at different times. I actually think that that could actually work out to be something really, really good. Want to know? Um, this is from Nupu Games. Uh, do unique items get a stat slash functionality boost since tempered legendaries are just straight up better? And is it generally not worth it to equip a unique item after the patch? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Adam can speak to some of these changes if you wanted to jump in, but we've done a pass on all the unique items. We've done things like uh, <laughs> Razor Plate, I think, has four uh, Thorns affixes, and we changed what the legendary power is. Yeah, that, that, uh, by the way, that was a big question we got from people at oh, PTR, okay. because they were like, hey, what, what about, about Razor, razor Plate? We've heard a lot of weed. Yeah. 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 I tried to upgrade the razor plate when I was on the pat on the PTR and I couldn't do it. They wouldn't let you because it had only an aspect. It had no affixes, so you couldn't upgrade it. So clearly they heard and they listened and they changed it. Razor plate, yeah, it'll be, it'll and, be cool. and it's actually in the patch notes. Um, and yeah, it's a lot of thorns. Razor plate's yeah. hilarious. We still love it's it. It's hilarious. I wanted to just have like one so you can't miss on Master Work. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, that yeah, what I'll say though about the unique to legendary item power level i suppose is that we knew when we were making these tempering changes and updating those that we wanted legendaries because they kind of have a journey like they have kind of different identities right now in the game and so we're still figuring out what we want to do with uniques long term but the idea is that like legendary items or items really they have a journey and you know you're you're working on them and there's a story to them and you know you get it and it's not like a one-stop shop you're done kind of like how they were before uniques a part of our identity is that that like you know you get a unique and it's freaking awesome and really powerful and very exciting and and you have it and you're done with it mm -hmm. and so we're we're keeping this discrepancy of like what their purposes are in the game for now um okay. and kind of seeing how it goes uh, we did take a look at some uniques but we didn't like do a whole pass of like you know every single unique now has five optics or something like that like we I wanted them to be a little bit different uniques, in different though. identities something. so we do kind of expect that uniques may be less prevalent than they were before we still believe though that a lot yeah. of uniques are they really key like, for various builds and so I you're still going to want them on the PTR, but you're not going to want like a unique in every single slot on your character now yeah. because there's clearly always better right sometimes that's like a complete contrast to the season season three it's you're trying to find one spot to put an aspect because you're using so many uniques but when i ran the ptr i did, i used zero uniques at all i just threw a whole bunch of aspects on there and it, it really really worked some builds will want more uniques, some will want less, and we want to kind of see how that plays first before making sweeping changes. Um, you know, some obvious roads we could take is like adding crafting to uniques. What if you could temper them? What if you could do these other things, right? Like, we know that that's a thing, and we may do that in the future, but we're kind of evaluating this world where it's not clearly always you only get one or the other. I mean, and we kind of want to see how that so. goes first so. uh, before making that's any big changes. Yeah, and the fixed nature is sort of has you consider it's part of your optimization puzzle. Right? Yes. Like, well, I'm going to give up some tempering affixes mm -hmm. to get this unique, for example, in, in, in my chest slot, for example. And we sort yeah. of want to see where that goes. Like, Maybe we think that like that's, that's fun. And, um, we think that the excitement of a unique is, is those, are those fixed stats. When you see the item on the ground, you know, like, oh, okay, that's, that's the unique I want. I can just equip it. I don't even have to work on it. Yeah. It's just, like, there for me. So, um, Awesome. And then I know, by the way, did we talk about... Uh, master working, or not master working, we but did uh, talk about master working. a lot. We did talk. <laughs> yeah, We've done we it did. twice on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> did we talk about groups and uh, oh. uh, with the pit? 
I didn't oh, write yeah. it down and I didn't yeah. talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we we got a bunch of feedback um, that you know it, it sucks to help someone with their pit run and just not get any master working material. It's like, well, why am I here? Um, so yeah. what we've done is we've made it so that the person who opens the pit is going to get 100% of the master working materials. Mm -hmm. That's Previously, good. I think it was uh, split maybe across all all players. It was. Um, yeah. And what yeah. we've done now is that. Person who opens it gets 100%, and then everyone who helps defeat the pit gets 50% of that target goal. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to walk that line where group play isn't just like totally overwhelmingly efficient, but you're still getting something for helping each other. I think they're trying to keep people from carrying, but the mats dropped so quickly in the pit, the pit that you really it really doesn't matter too much. So I think they should just give everybody 100% because you're going to get all of the, the materials you need anyway, so it, it's not going to really matter all too much. Go through those pit levels. Yeah, we, we heard a lot of feedback about players going like, ah, oh, it feels a little unrewarding to yeah, do yeah, that. And so totally there, there were some changes. In general, there, I think there's still some thing. tension with uh, how players feel about the efficiency of groups versus the efficiency yeah. of solo play with like yeah. boss summons and things like that. These are things we're thinking about, we have ideas on, but we want to continue to get feedback, particularly with these changes, yep. and yep. kind of see how things play out. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Um, we, we're getting questions about, you know, uh, hey, are there any updates on social features? And, ah, and this things one. Like that coming to, to D4. They um, need to update Don't know if we have anything plans. to share right now. So right. bad. It's, it's something, obviously, the team is very well, you guys ask all the time, so we, we and we're, we're very, very aware of it. Please. Um, and the team is has been looking at it, and, and we'll, once we have more to share, we'll end up sharing it with you guys, but for right now, we don't have any update. Yeah. Um, it, there's questions about it. Is there if there's plans of adding maybe potential leaderboards to the pit or fun. anything, or or is that, that going to be, be something that's just exclusively on the gauntlet? Um, I think the idea of adding leaderboards, other types of content over time, makes sense. Could be pretty fun, you know. But uh, right now, I really want to see how the pit plays on its own. Uh, the you know the um, trials feature on and challenge ladder. Like we really want that to be a place where players can, or the other gauntlet, like, it's a place we really want players to be able to like go and compete in a very fixed environment, a very the extremely fair environment, which is like the what we really prioritize. If that's going to be the case, I want them to add something hard. The Gauntlet is a 70 dungeon, and especially with how much stronger these characters are going to be, it's going to feel even less of a challenge. So something to contrast that quick, fast, easy pace to like AOZ like inside the trials would be amazing. So hopefully... It, Probably not this season, I'm guessing, because uh, they've been putting everything they had into it. But maybe the following season we get the gauntlet, and then we get something like AOZ or the pit inside of the trials to give us a ladder to climb, but something that's challenging to get through and not just quick and easy. The release. Um, the pit is pretty variable, runs a run, so that makes yeah. it a little more complicated. It doesn't mean that we would never add it. I think that there's a clear indicator that there's, it'd, be, it'd be pretty fun to have this Very slightly well, looser leaderboard associated with a static. feature like this. Yeah. You know, but we're going to see how things play out, and we'll be, we'll be thinking about how we can add more competitive features like that to the, to the game over time. Okay. Um, question from L. Rowe here. I'm not going to pronounce that right, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, when Elwood, people say yeah. all the time yeah. on yeah. stream. Nailed it. Uh, yeah, it's like an uh, Elven uh, right now. Not, since not everyone actually experienced PTR, because PTR itself was on uh, PC Battle.net, but... Uh, they were asking when tempering, can you keep previous roles? Can you keep previous roles? That would be um, Oh, like the enchanting system. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be yeah currently right now, we don't have the functionality to let you keep the role. Right now, if you're going to commit to re-rolling, you're yeah, going to lose yeah, that previous one. You're committing to re-rolling. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of like the blacksmith is hammering on that item and unlocking different mm -hmm. aspects of the weapon. You sort of lose Actually, what you previously had. That but we're open to feedback, right? It's a completely new feature. Yeah. Really want to hear how it's playing. And then ultimately, what we want is a fun crafting feature. So. Uh, you know, that, that sort of feedback is really valuable. Uh, we'll take two more, and one is from Matt, LOL. Is uh, tempering going to allow changes for the skills, uh, the skill type, like maybe lightning hydras or maybe mm. changes to blizzard where it's a rain of fire or something like that? <laughs> that that's cool. pretty cool. <laughs> Honestly, anything in Africa is a cool idea. Yeah. This is open season of things we could potentially do in the future, yeah. Not, a, not in season four, but, you know, possibly in the future. Okay. Awesome. Um, and I, this is actually from a there's a lot of space to grow. There is. Utility yeah. is a category that we can yeah, do. There's a lot of space to See, that's a really good point. We have a complete core fundamental change to this game. The only way to go, really, right now is because they stripped everything down, they rebuilt everything, is up. So hopefully, everything, they start listening to the PTR, they start listening to me, they start listening to you, and this gets way better. Way better. Potentially, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, there's a lot of questions in here about like um, uh, additional character customization options and stuff like that coming in the future. It is like something that the team is always looking at, adding additional things to for players to ha have more choice of what they want to do, especially as they're creating characters. Um, and of course, uh, being able to obtain those, like even just some things in season four, mm -hmm. of being able to get additional, you know, cosmetic thing for your mount and everything like that, is something that uh, the the team is most definitely looking. Yeah, at. we we actually we care about this a great deal. Um, I think one thing that's very interesting uh, about uh, Diablo Four, or a problem that we have that's very specific, right, is um, there are actually quite a few cosmetics for players to earn out on bosses and things like throughout the game. Like there's there there's lot lots of, them, of things actually. for players to collect cosmetically in the game. Um, but it's really hard to know that that drops off that thing yeah. in Diablo 4. Like, you can go and you can fight a, uh, like yeah, a world boss 50 times and not have a, uh, a drop occur for you. How many times I've found cosmetics in my inventory and I'm like, where did I get this? Because I was just like going through, clicking real fast, picking up loot, and all of a sudden I have something in my bags that I have no idea where it came from. Right, like then eventually you get your special horse, like, oh, oh, okay, it is here, but you have no idea. So it's kind of like it's harder to know exactly where to grind. We're actually talking about that a bit on the uh, on the dev side. See if like there's more ways we can kind of like make it clear where certain things can be found, which I think could be really fun. Yeah. Uh, but I think that there's work we can do there, and and also there's still work we can do about just trying to get more cool looks into the game. So we've been talking a lot more you with uh, the various well, teams inside, like, uh, in, inside the fact. Diablo Four, with, and there's a, a broad agreement we want to bring more cool stuff to you guys, and, and more cool stuff for players to find and and pick up and equip and feel like it was really exciting to get that thing. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing we're doing like already is we're like as we develop more uniques, we're trying to make sure that we have like more unique appearances to go with all of them. We usually we have like a lot of really really fun ideas. And we have we have to constantly like wrestle with like all right, we we only have like this x x many swords, but like we have like this many ideas for swords, and we want to like try to get this in the game. We want to wait till we have the artwork for a sword. We we usually try to make sure that we've got a, a fun toy to immediately give you. Uh, but we're going to make sure we're trying to get more of that stuff in game as well. So there's just m even more artwork. To Whoever's in the background coughing sounds product. like me trying not to cough. Awesome. On, so on here. that's all the time we got right here for today. Um, we we went up. Well, that's it. That's the whole thing. I'm very excited to see what happens in this next season. I really am a fan of everything that they did. I know that a lot of people have some regrets that they're not going to be putting in any of the seasonal mechanic or at least seasonal powers give it a break this time go into this without any doubt just keep an open mind clear your mind of all your pre preconceived notions just get into there play the game have fun treat it like it's a brand new game because that's what it's going to feel like it will feel like a brand new game you're going to have the mechanics that are going to be similar but the feel of it completely new thank you for watching I'm going to be live on YouTube and Twitch on May 14th when the server goes live. So stop by, drop me a quick hi. I would love to hear from you. I'll be running a Barbarian. I still haven't figured out my build yet. There's so many good ones out there, but hopefully I see you there.